The 28th of November, 1951, was a significant date in local government history in the municipality of Rockdale. On this day at the Rockdale Town Hall, the A.R. Blewett Memorial Award was presented to the council in recognition of its progress in the preceding year. The bronze plaque, then received by the mayor, Alderman Enoch Jones, at the hands of the president of the trust, is awarded each year to the municipal and shire council achieving the most progress in all fields and avenues of local government activity. It is a coveted honour, seldom won by a suburban council. This is the story of the progress and development of the municipality and some of its achievements in the award year. It could be a saga of the local government service, but it intends only to be the story of local government in Rockdale. The municipality contains a population of 83,000 people in an area of 12 square miles, extending from Torella in the north to San Susi in the south, and from Brighton the Sands westward to Carlton and Kingsgrove. Thriving commercial centres nine miles from the heart of Sydney include Rockdale Township, the civic centre of the old municipality of Rockdale and a shopping centre of considerable importance in the commercial life of the metropolis. The main street, Princess Highway, with its modern shops and bustling concourse of people and traffic in business hours, indicates the tempo and volume of commercial activity in this centre. Courage and enterprise have built these centres from the villages of 50 years ago and have made the people self-sufficient, proud of their towns and no longer entirely dependent upon the city for their needs. Bexley, civic centre of the old municipality of Bexley, preserves a link with an important town in the county of Kent, England. Here too is overwhelming evidence of the importance of Bexley as a rapidly expanding centre of business and commerce, adequately meeting the demands of an increasing population. Ramsgate, another link with Kent, truly merits its local designation, the Golden Mile. Planned factory and industrial development and beautification add to the balance of the community, provide local employment and set new standards for the decentralisation of industry. The council's policy in regard to industry is rewarded by the development of many fine industrial activities which do not detract from the aesthetic or from the amenities of an otherwise residential locality. An important part of the council's local planning is to provide for such industries as are essential to the community and to ensure that they are located to the best advantage. Homes in ideal surroundings mean health, contentment, security and happiness in the family life. These in turn influence good citizenship and encourage civic pride. People living under these conditions are best fitted to function as citizens of the community and to make a very real contribution to orderly local government in their area. Nearly all of these people own the home in which they fulfil their family destiny. They cherish the intense pride of thus having a stake in the community. The settlement and housing of people in these conditions is the primary function of local government in the close supervision of healthy and attractive building standards. Multiple unit or flat dwellings too have their place in a well-balanced residential development and so the council plans areas where multi-unit dwellings may be erected and strives continually for common understanding with housing authorities that whilst flats are necessary, they should be limited to reasonable proportions in this district where conditions favour the single home unit. Fine institutions and places of worship complete and lend character to community development. Here we have the courage and faith of a people and their pride in their community, manifested in splendid architecture and in sacred edifices worthy of the best Christian tradition. In this modern era, life would be difficult without transport. Fast and modern electric trains, moving millions of passengers each year, eliminate time and distance in the daily lives of our people. Electric trolley buses and modern diesel omnibuses provide the auxiliary transport from train to home and to the beaches and other attractions. Close attention has been paid to the development of our main lines of transport yet there is always need for improvement with an expanding population. 
timetable adjustment and introduction of feeder services are matters of constant concern to the council. Services through tree-lined avenues. From the council seedling nursery, a thousand new trees and shrubs each year add beauty to the landscape. Suburban travel and living is enriched by this mantle of green. Here is an important aspect of the council's work from which flows immeasurable benefits in beauty and pleasure. In the streets, our native shrubs can reflect the glory of our heritage of sunshine and climb. Nature has smiled upon this locality. Six miles of golden beach overlook the historic landing place of Captain Cook, a wonderland of sport and recreation for our people and for the less fortunate people of other districts. Unlimited sea and sunbathing and a sailor's paradise. Beach and waterfront improvements over the years have made this the weekend mecca of the family and the resort of the sportsman. Unequal beach and bathing facilities are enhanced by the beauty and the grace of sail. BJ and 16-foot squadrons of these waters are the toast and the pride of the aquatic sportsmen of today and the inspiration of those of tomorrow. The foresight of the past and the plans for the future safeguard for our people and for those who visit us this great wealth of pleasure and relaxation. Safe bathing enclosures such as this at Brighton La Sands are a feature of the council's waterfront service. Enclosed expanses of beach and tidal seawater provide safe bathing for 130,000 adults and 100,000 children each season. Graduated water depths vary from beach bathing to deep water springboard diving. Well-equipped dressing pavilions provide the background to spacious deck promenades and walks. In this modern enclosure, the baths manager and his expert staff supervise the safety and comfort of the bathers. Slides, wheels and a variety of devices train and encourage the youth of the community in a healthy and useful sport and add interest to a typically Australian pastime. Three other seawater enclosures at Ramsgate, Dolls Point and Sandringham form part of the pattern of community service, which is an obligation of local government under Australian conditions. The beautiful Bardwell Creek Scenic Reserve is but part of a total of 450 acres of park and recreation area developed and maintained by the council for the pleasure and recreation of its people. Natural scenic beauty being preserved for today and for posterity. Stately Bexley Park with its oval, turf cricket wickets and avenues of palms and trees. The atmosphere of old England is captured in the charm of Seaforth Park. Barwell Park is further evidence of the possibilities of development and beautification. Many other parks have been developed to similar standards of beauty and usefulness. These parks adorn and beautify the entire locality. Careful planning has placed our municipality in the forefront of development of this nature. £20,000 per year is a sum well spent in developing these lungs for the community. Green carpets of open space that have the magic quality of transporting us to a fairyland of healthy interest, recreation and happiness. Places to which our people may venture in search of contact with the good earth the green sward and the beauty and restfulness of nature. Four thousand pounds of modern playground equipment dispersed at numerous suitable locations throughout the municipality is but part of the council's effort to keep our children healthy and happy, to occupy their childish leisure hours in a most profitable way. These are the cradles of good citizenship, tolerance and sportsmanship from which these children will graduate to the playing fields where for adolescents and adults the council has established 44 cricket wickets and 22 other playing fields for football, hockey, baseball, vigoro and all types of healthy sport. Our British heritage has bequeathed us a love of cricket and all ball games. Our climate 
affords us an all-around-the-year sporting season. These combine to influence the individual and national character, and it is a function of local government, cheerfully embraced by Rockdale, to provide the means for such development. The municipal 18-hole golf course at Bexley is an asset of great importance in the life of the community. The beautiful clubhouse is the home of the Bexley Golf Club, which shares the course with casual public players of the Royal and Ancient Game. The club, acting as host of the council's course, provides meals and facilities for the public in addition to the excellent club service available to its members. This opportunity for healthy sport and recreation is embraced by 50,000 people each year. Club members and the public alike enjoy a popular sport on a course designed and constructed by the council as a major step in its program of recreational service to the public. This standard course, extending over undulating and attractive countryside, enjoys wide popularity and is entirely self-supporting. A vast green space of inestimable value to the community devoted to the extensive use of people playing the most popular and perhaps the most skillful of ball games. The Bexley North Municipal Bowling Greens and Clubhouse are further evidence of the part local government can play in providing suitable amenities for the people. This venture too is entirely self-supporting, the club repaying the capital cost by way of rent. But there is no room for such mundane thoughts as rent when Kitty beckons. And finally, Modern public tennis courts highlight the range and variety of effort devoted to the physical well-being and recreation of the citizens. Four schools of art, subsidised and encouraged by the council, remain the foundation upon which council has progressively built its programme of activity in the fields of culture, music and the arts. And it is in this, and the charitable and social field, that the mayoress and ladies of the council play their part. Music in our community begins with three musical societies operating at our beautiful town hall and four brass bands promoted by the council, stages in the plan which lead to even greater cultural achievement. The famed Rockdale Municipal Orchestra 50 players under the baton of Cedric Ashton and the Rockdale Municipal Opera Company represent the most forward movement in local government cultural effort. By means of these ventures, the council has opened to the people a field rich in culture and wide in interpretation and appreciation of orchestral music, ballet and the opera, thus bringing to the people a wealth of pleasure and education not otherwise available to them. In our ventures, these outstanding artists found encouragement and opportunities that have since served them well in their careers. Service to the citizens of tomorrow begins at the baby health centres. Council is operating two of these centres, is erecting a third and a fourth is being planned. The service and influence of local government recognises no age barrier we truly appreciate our obligation to every phase of community life. We continue our interest in the young citizen in the preschool kindergarten, established by council in a municipal building, furnished and equipped for the purpose, and controlled by a citizen's committee. At least two more such ventures are being planned by the council. As they leave the kindergarten, these kiddies will join the 1,200 older children who, each year, attend the numerous summer holiday play centres conducted by the council. The next step in service is to the school age child. The outstanding example of this is the council's free school exchange library of 1,500 volumes circulating continuously in 12 local schools. 
For the adolescent groups of scouts and girl guides, we provide clubhouse sites and recreational facilities. The Council is very conscious of its obligation to the growing citizen of tomorrow. It can and does extend its benevolent interest to the needs and welfare of the growing child and the adolescent who will soon be expected to make a real contribution to the life and government of the community. Activities in this field and close cooperation with schools and parents bring their own reward in happy and healthy children and pay dividends in citizenship that enrich not local government alone, but our nation and way of life. Children growing in the tradition of fathers, whose memory is perpetuated by the council in many ways. The Garden of Memory. Lest we forget lest we forget our obligations to those of our community who made it possible for us to build with confidence in the future. In the forefront of Council's obligations to the community has been placed the civic rehabilitation of ex-servicemen. Memorial hall sites have been provided for no less than seven sub-branches of the Returned Servicemen's League. These groups of men, weary from their services and sacrifices to the country, have been encouraged to look to the Council for sympathetic understanding of their problems. More concrete expression of the thanks of the community is found in the numerous home sites subdivided and made available to ex-servicemen and their families on council land. So the council provides for a grateful community those lasting symbols and expressions of memory and tribute to the sacrifices of our citizens. And it is in this spirit and tradition of service that the council functions under the leadership of the mayor in entirely honorary management of this vast organization. Alderman J. H. Jones, R. J. Scott, E. G. Barton, A. Maynard and E. Docos prepare for the arduous demands of a long and frequent session of the council under the chairmanship of the first citizen, His Worship the Mayor, Alderman E. Jones. Alderman N. C. Guest, C. C. W. Nairn, J. G. McCormick and C. Brooks follow the debate opened by Alderman R.T. Gosling. Chief Engineer Carson, Assistant Engineer Gilchrist and Baths Manager Sandon advise Council on technical and engineering matters and supervise outdoor activities. Alderman E.A. Tyndall, F.P. Bowron, W.E. McGuinness and H.G. Carruthers refer to the Mayor matters for attention by Town Clerk Scott, Deputy Town Clerk Rob, Chief Health Inspector Mitchell, Chief Building Inspector Orchard and Accountant town. The basic concern of the council is of course the annual public works program. With modern plant worth more than £80,000, the council spends £350,000 annually in essential service to the community. Streets must be designed, drained and constructed, footpaths provided, curbing and guttering installed, the thoroughfares illuminated and maintained, frequently top-dressed and generally cleansed and kept free of weeds an almost endless but basically important task demanding time, thought and planning on the part of unpaid representatives of the people. Skilled engineering, costly plant supervision and workmen trained in a variety of ways and great quantities of material. This will constitute a major activity of the council for many years, a program depending from time to time upon prevailing costs and the limits imposed by common sense application of the outmoded system of financing local government solely by direct property taxation. The needs of the municipality are carefully sifted. The relative urgency of each work is gauged. And so is accomplished in each year the best possible program of maintenance and new works, annual steps towards the distant goal of complete roading of the municipality. And a typical year's work program ranges from the mowing of parks and streets to the construction of 150 chains of concrete pathways, 140 chains of ballasted and blacktop roadways, and the resheeting of great lengths of footpaths. An average of almost two miles of concrete curbing and guttering is the target each year. In this way, the footways and carriageways are defined, the thoroughfares drained, and nuisance and inconvenience completely eliminated. The major works operation is the construction of the completely ballasted and blacktop roadway. This is the ultimate aim and the end towards which council progresses. After construction, 
These thoroughfares demand repeated resealing, and at least nine miles of this process must be programmed each year. The constructed roads must be preserved, and so the council must pause to allocate men, plant and material to this speedy and costly work. The Works Department of our activities alone sets us apart as the largest single industry in the district. Other basic needs of the year's activity are public health services, annually diphtheria immunization clinics, mass TB x-ray surveys, rat control measures, health week lectures in schools. The annual cleanup is welcomed by the residents who enthusiastically comb their premises and place all non-combustible rubbish in the street for quick collection and removal by the council. The quantities of rubbish removed indicate wholehearted cooperation in keeping the municipality clean and tidy and discouraging rats and vermin. The rubbish product of this public health campaign is rolled and covered and put to good use in reclaiming low-lying areas. In modern local government, great attention is paid to communal cleanliness, an important aspect of which is the frequent collection and disposal of household garbage. Here, the service is rendered twice each week to over 20,000 homes, the council employing the most modern, convenient and hygienic garbage vehicles, which entirely enclose the garbage and reduce the work and strain upon the workmen. New methods can, and do, eliminate the objectionable features of a distasteful but essential service, and even the disposal of household refuse can be dignified by thought and enterprise. Ours was one of the first councils to appreciate the disadvantages of the old methods of sanitation, and to replace them with a complete fleet of these modern vehicles. The council has pioneered and broken fresh ground in the public health field of food sanitation. Manuals on the subject of food handling have been compiled by the council and trained health inspectors conduct frequent classes to educate the food shop proprietor, employee and the paying public in hygienic and modern methods of food preparation, storage, handling and distribution. Progress demands that the old methods give way to new. Time and energy must be found for still greater amenities, such as this rest centre for women, about to be built at Bexley. Others are being considered elsewhere. Amidst all these services, we press on with the Council's town planning, so that those who come after will inherit an even better pattern of community living and confirm our faith in the growing influence and essential democracy of local government.